welcome everyone to the Humorous Speech and Evaluation Contest of Fox Valley Toastmasters Club 6840. My name is Dean Gloss and I'm serving as your Toastmaster for the evening. It's a little business to take care of. It's my responsibility to recognize anyone who has served District 30 as a, in any capacity. Among us this evening is our former district governor, Michaeline Zawatsky. Welcome, Michaeline. She's sitting at our contest chair. Former division governor. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that the uh, moving along. Make sure you turn off any cell phones devices that we have. That's important. We'll have two contests, the Humorous Speech Contest and the Speech Evaluation Contest. The first contest will be the Speech Evaluation Contest. When that contest is concluded, no, the first contest this evening, we've changed it up, it's going to, going to be the Humorous Contest. When that contest has concluded, we'll have a 10 minute break. After the break, we'll conduct the Humorous Speech Contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmasters International Rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contest contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. Thank you. With that said, let the contest begin. We will now have the humorous speech contest. Do I have the names of the speeches for the? They should be on your sheets. Oh, the, the name. The, okay. the speech contest titles. I think she did it at home today. Okay. The, <laughs> the speech contest titles. Still working on his bio? No, here. Okay. You have all the time. Sure okay. All right, so this is Nilu. This is who's next, Tim or Linda? Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Thanks for bearing with me. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. You're going to give us the order. Oh, the speaking order is. First up, our first speaker in the humorous contest is Nilu Ali. The second speaker is Tim Bolger. And the third speaker is Linda Enigenberg. Nilu Ali. About myself. Nilu Ali. I was here as a guest and today I'm here I was so excited that I went home and I told my husband I am now a Toastmaster I'm now a Toastmaster they let me in the club, they let me in the club. <laughs> and he looks up and he says Lord please forgive them for they knew not what they did <laughs> and um, oh I forgot to introduce myself I am Neelu and since it's not very obvious by looking at me, I have to let you know that I'm actually Indian by birth. <laughs> and uh, mine was an arranged marriage. Um, wow. By arranged marriage, so for those who don't know the concept, it's a time-honored method where the parents get together and decide what's best for the children and arrange their marriage. Now, if you meet my husband, he'll tell you a different story. 
he tells people that I was pregnant with my son and I was so charmed by him that I proposed to him. <laughs> and he was so drunk that he accepted it. <laughs> That's how we came to be married. Anyway, the first thing that comes to my mind when I talk about my husband is his absent-minded nature. I know people are absent-minded, they forget their keys, they forget their glasses, their wallets, but my husband takes it to the next level. Hmm. He is so absent-minded and he so doesn't want to be absent-minded that he not only grabs his keys to work, but mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Same with work computers, car keys, everything. One day he was going out of the house and I gave him his lunch and I also gave him the garbage to throw out. And you guessed it. He threw the lunch in the garbage and took the garbage to work. <laughs> he really did. One more incident comes to mind and uh, that was when we were newly married. He comes home one day and um, I show him a picture. And, I, and that's a picture of him and a girl standing rather intimately by the beach. Yes. And I question him, who's this girl in the picture? He takes the picture from me, gazes at it for a long time, looks back at me and says, honey, I have no idea who this girl is. I swear to God. I get annoyed. I said, really? That's you in the picture, right? How could you say that? I question him again and again and again, and he gets so hot and uncomfortable, but he still says, I swear, I don't know who it is. I cannot hold it any longer. I just burst out laughing, because it's me in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a honeymoon picture too, I swear. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you about myself. I have two children, yes. I have two children. My son, Noah, is six, and my daughter, Zara, is three. And I have to tell you that they bring so much laughter at home, too. Just the other day, my son was telling me, he was telling his dad, Daddy, I love you a million. And my mom, I only love her 100. Oh. And my, my, my husband says to him, Noah, that's not fair. You know your mother carried you for nine months in her tummy? You should really love her more. It's only fair. And he looks at us and says, what? She carried me in her tummy for nine months? Why didn't she just lay an egg? <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter, not to be left far behind, just last week, she came up to me and she said, Mommy, why did you marry my dad? I wanted to marry him. Oh. And I told her, Zara, if you marry dad, what am I going to do? And she says, don't worry, Mommy. You can be our nanny. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was here today, I made a lot of fun of my husband, but I really want to tell you that the only reason I'm here today is because of him. Because he's the one who drove me here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Timer, can we have one minute of silence? One, can you set the timer for one minute while the judges mark the ballot? May we have one minute of silence? Another 10 seconds.
Our next speaker, our next contestant, Tim Bolger. The forecast. The forecast. Tim Bolger. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have aging parents who are absolute pessimists? <laughs> These are the type of guys who, like my father, loves to watch Fox News. Then he calls me up and he says, Tim, do you know what's happening to our country these days? And I say, yes, I'm aware of it. But Dad, you don't know what's going on. There's actually really hope for this country. Let me explain why. In a most recent book entitled, of course, A Forecast for the Next Hundred Years, and many of the numerous publications, they say the United States is going to do a great job in the next century. That we are actually on the verge of our power. That, number one, population is going to go down. That the United States is going to be the big kid on the block. And three, we're going to solve global warming. How can I do this all in seven minutes? Just watch and learn. First off, why is their population declining these days? And what is it that's bringing us, as a country and as a world, having our population actually decline and go down? <coughs> I bet you it's very simple. Children are a pain in the ass to raise. <laughs> in, in, in underdeveloped countries, you know, they're a source of labor. You take them to the farm, they go into the fields, and they provide for your old age. Well, let's just put it this way. One kid, it's been estimated, almost a three quarters of a million dollars to raise. So you're not going to have ten of them. Maybe one, maybe two, but that's going to be three quarters of a million dollars out of your own pocket. Oh, they provide lots of joy. They provide lots of, of, of help, but certainly not ten. Two, maybe three, and you know what's even worse? Those children come around and they're not just leaving at 16 anymore like they used to. They stick around when <laughs> they're 20, 23, 24 after college. And yes, they may even come home again. And when you have two, three, four, or five, it gets to be awful damn expensive. So think about it. That's why our population's been declining. And if you want to take a look at one of the biggest trends over the next century, it's going to be that our population's going to age. Point one. Point two. The United States has been the big boy on the block for many years. Now think about it. We spend most of our money on defense, certainly a lot more than other countries. It's like we're the big bully on the block and we have to pr produce our ways. And they've often said that we're just at the adolescence of our power. Now think about teenagers for a minute. And think about what the United States has been doing over the last 20 years. Don't all teenage boys have to flex their muscle? Don't they all have to prove themselves? Look at, hey, look at the Iran war. Look at the Iraq war. Look at how we tend to want to dominate the world. And we want to say to ourselves, hey guys, we are number one. But then of course, the second interest that most teenage boys have, that's learning to drive. Mm -hmm. Just imagine what all of a sudden happens when we start integrating with the world through this thing called the World Wide Web and all the data that's going on. It's sort of like we're in this unnavigable water of roads and systems and things like this. And we got things like viruses and and all kinds of stuff associated with our worldwide infrastructure of IT. It's like we're just now learning the rules of the road. And sure, have we had our accidents? Oh, you bet we've had. Look at the, and then, and then of course there are people wanting to bloody our nose. Look at the Twin Tower fiasco, but also look at our reaction to it. We wanted to, our nose got bloodied, and boy did we react. Somewhat overreact too. But you know what the worst thing about it is? 
is that most teenage boys need a chance to find out what they're really involved <clears throat> and what their identity is. And when you really look at today's part bipartisan politics of the Republicans and the Democrats and all the debate that goes on, it's sort of like a boy who's got the term cognitive dissonance. On the one hand, he is this way. On the other hand, he's the other way. And he can't seem to reconcile or find his way or his path. Needless to say, once we get that started, once we find our true energy source, which I believe is something called thorium molten salt reactors, but that's for another time, another speech, I believe once we grow up, once we get our identity back and on its way, we're going to be just fine. And Dad, yeah, everybody grows up eventually. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Timer set the timer for one minute while the judges mark their ballots. Off. Would you please set the turn the green light off? Thank you. Our third contestant, Linda Annigenberg. If only. If only. Linda Annigenberg. When I was a little girl, I loved to play dress up. I'd put on my little pink boa and I'd put on my little high heeled shoes and my little pink purse and I would play movie star. What little girl didn't? Pretty typical behavior. What if I hadn't been raised in that kind of environment? What if I had been raised in a world full of Toastmasters? <laughs> Perhaps instead of playing movie star with my little pink purse I would have been playing the world champion of public speaking with my little yellow banner. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests, oh, what a different world it could have been if only I'd been raised in a Toastmasters world. For starters, my mother would have given well-crafted speeches instead of lectures. <laughs> if lecturing were an Olympic sport, my mom would have been in a gold medal hall of fame right next to Michael Phelps. <laughs> she was no sprinter. No, mom was an endurance lecturer. Mom could go for hours, days even, before taking a, a breath. And just when you thought she was winding down, and the end was in sight, like a season long distance runner, she'd get that second wind. <laughs> and there was no looking around the room, no looking down at your hands. You had to look her square in the eye the entire time. After three hours and 47 minutes, it got pretty monotonous. So I devised a clever plan to alleviate the eyeball strain. And I would tune her out, and I would study different parts of her face. And I would think, Oh, Mom, you have beautiful skin. Are you using oil of Olay? Or, ooh, Mom, eyebrows are getting a little wild. It's time to break out those tweezers. 
If only I'd been raised in a world full of Toastmasters at seven minutes, I could have thrown up the red card <laughs> and been 30 seconds away from freedom. <laughs> but I didn't grow up in Toastmasters world and neither did she. Instead, when my mother looked at me and said, young lady, what do you have to say for yourself? I told her she needed to tweeze her eyebrows. <laughs> I don't remember what happened after that. My, sa my dad said something about scraping me off the floor with a stick and a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had been raised in a Toastmasters world, I could have answered any question with confidence and poise. Mrs. Slovic stopped me after junior year in high school after class and she wanted to know why I hadn't finished my homework the night before. I could have answered her tabletop in style. You know, it's really interesting you brought that up, Mrs. Slovic, because just yesterday, I was pondering life and what really matters. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things you can't take with you when you go. They're not important. The clothes on your back, the money in your pocket, that car out in the driveway, even your homework, not important. No, what really matters, what really counts in life is the people, special, wonderful people like you. <laughs> so last night, instead of doing my homework, I went out with friends, and I forged bonds, and I nurtured those relationships, because after all, in the grand scheme, that's what really counts. <laughs> but I didn't grow up in a Toastmasters world, and neither did she. When she whipped out her detention booklet, I served a week. <laughs> if only I had been raised in a world full of Toastmasters, my father, instead of punishing me, would have evaluated my performance. <laughs> my first car was a 1971 VW Volkswagen Bug and had a big chrome bumper in front that overhung the side of the car by about two inches. I was backing out of the garage one morning, getting ready to go to school, and I was backing out ever so cautiously, mind you, putt, 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 and the right bumper caught the garage door track and ripped it off, and I enhanced the size of the garage by about three feet. <laughs> Note the use of the word enhanced, because that's a Toastmaster skill. But later that night, I had to go home, face the firing squad, and tell Dad what I'd done. Yep, if only he'd been a Toastmaster, he would have evaluated that performance. <laughs> well, Lindy, I have to admire the surgical precision with which you executed that maneuver. <laughs> Because I noticed not only did you enhance the size of my garage considerably, I also noticed that you managed to leave not a single scratch on your car. Nothing I've ever seen before. I would have liked to have seen you miss the garage. Perhaps a little closer attention to your mirrors, especially on the right. That's something we can work on going forward. Overall, surgically executed precision maneuver, and I look forward to never seeing it again. Oh yes, fellow Toastmasters, you have only been raised in that Toastmasters world. How vastly different things could have been. Yes, if only we were raised in the Toastmasters world, lives could have been forever altered. That's right. You just witnessed me paint myself into a corner in grand fashion. <laughs> because unlike me, my son did grow up in a world of Toastmasters. <laughs> by giving this speech with him present, from this moment forward, I will never again be able to lecture him for more than seven minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Will everyone please remain silent so that the judges can complete their ballots and the ballots have been co collected by the vote counters. When you are filling out your ballot, Please remember to print your name and sign it or the ballots are not official. And when you are finished, just hold them up and I will collect them.
Thank you, Madam Chief Judge. I'm just, just going to have a small briefing before. We're going to have a, a, a brief a briefing. <laughs> yeah. A small brief briefing for the uh, evaluation contest. Are you going to have a break then while we have and then a, a 10 minute break? So the briefing starts, then we're having a break, yes. right? Okay, so I can stop taping at this point? Yes.